Chris, tell me about the CTMU. When did the idea first cross your mind? Well, I recall thinking that reality was a language starting in my late teens. Uh, the idea sat in my head, gaining inertia throughout my 20s. I was busy trying to survive and too poor to buy expensive books by professional academics, of course. And uh, then it began to flower in conjunction with parallel ideas that occurred to me. Being excluded from academia on anything approaching acceptable terms to me, I was forced to relegate theorization to my spare time, which was sometimes in short supply. You know, I had to work various menial jobs in order to uh, pay the rent, so I didn't have a lot of time to spend on theorization. Do you feel there was a divine inspiration? Absolutely. I'm describing the structure of the primary identity of reality, or in other words, what reality ultimately is, namely God himself. God was telling me in all of the ways at his disposal who he is and what he looks like from our limited perspective. The first thoughts I had, in addition to reality being language-like, were that the earth, and by extension ultimate reality, was a vast meta-organism, a coherent form of life unto itself from which our lives are somehow inherited. In that picture, human beings are a bit like the cells of its body. Beginning with this rudimentary biocosmic mariology, true CTMU-style ontological inference began. And that's when I began getting into the more technical aspects of the theory. How did you develop the theory? By pure thought, often from first principles. I found paradoxes especially useful, using the associative power of mind to work my way through the Platonic and Hegelian dialectics that were inspired by these paradoxes. I was actually never disappointed in the results. I virtually always achieved some level of success. Is the CTMU the first self-simulation theory of the universe? Yes, as far as I know, I was the first to use the term self-simulation in the context of reality theory. The simulation hypothesis, absent the prefix self, can be traced back much farther than that, of course, depending on what one wants to call a simulation. The simulation is supposed to be language-based and or computational as opposed to generically mental or metaphysical. That pushes it up the timeline. But still, I'm among the first there as well. In 1989, I published what seems to have been the first application of the concept to a major philosophical problem, namely Newcomb's Paradox. Although others, including science fiction authors and a couple of scientists, had discussed the possibility that the world is running inside a computer, no one had been terribly specific about the details. <laughs>